morning. <laughs> uh, I'm Kelsey Bardoff. Um, as many of you know me, and I get to speak today, sharing a little bit of my own story and things that I've learned um, recently uh, through reflections and different conversations that I've had. Um, so I really would like to start with a question that was recently asked of me. Um, someone very close to me asked me, when did you actually become a Christian? Um, someone who I thought would know the answer to this question. Uh, many of you know that I spent my childhood here at Epworth. i um, been here for like 20 years. Um, <laughs> So it all started with Anna McGuckin, now Anna Glenn, um, our missionary over in Liberia, asking me to come to Epworth. Um, we were eight. We grew up together. She was my best friend. Um, and from there, I spent my childhood here. Uh, and I learned about God here. Um, I learned and grew in my faith here. 20 years later, I'm still here. Um, it's been great. So <laughs> over the years, I started, or after Anna asked me this question recently, I started to reflect on my journey and try to answer that question. Um, it was really, really good question. And I started to think of my faith journey more as these peaks and valleys um, that match my relationship with Jesus, which is where this beautiful picture comes from, um, and the, the title of our talk. Um, these peaks and valleys kind of matched um, where I was in my faith, and I'm hoping that some of you can relate to this. Um, there are times when I am so close to God, I can hear him in every turn, every decision that I make, um, and then there are some times when I hear these earthquakes and the fire and the wind before I can hear his voice, um, and I just lose him very easily. Um, so I've done my very best being here um, to be a follower of Christ, during the, um, but during these valleys, sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm a teacher, you think this would be easy. Um, it's not, so <laughs> give me a second and I'll calm down eventually. <laughs> but um, yeah, you guys are not 15, so it's a little more nerve wracking. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, these valleys is where I think I have learned the most um, and these valleys um, have been the most challenging for me. I've never really stopped loving God. He's always been there. I've always been able to feel him. But um, these valleys that we have, and I think everyone has different ones, whether they're anger or temptations or busyness of life, um, have really pulled me away. And I think my biggest one is actually comfort. Um, I can get really comfortable in life, um, and it's one of those things that just sneaks up on me. And before I know it, years have gone by or months have gone by, um, and I've just been passive or I've been busy. Anybody else really busy? Yeah. <laughs> um, my actions have never stopped showing what I believe is Christianity, the love, the kindness, the goodness. Um, but this life of faith, I've realized over the years, is so much more than what you do in the public eye. It's those conversations that you have with God um, and with each other. Both people that I've known for years and new people in my life are the ones that have really pushed me up to the peaks, which is um, what I really want to talk about. Um, Hebrews 12 talks about a life of discipline. Um, I'm going to focus on just a part of it. I know Toby just read the, um, the big passage, but Paul describes a life of discipline that draws us closer to God and strengthens our faith. I've experienced this discipline multiple times through life, through these conversations, um, these really, really hard conversations that I've been faced with. Um, these conversations, both with people my own age, people that are older than me, people that are younger than me, um, have been the ones that have pushed me back up to those peaks um, and away from those valleys. So in my early 20s, um, believe it or not, I'm in my late 20s, um, <laughs> in my early 20s, uh, that comfort really snuck into my life. Um, it really, really became apparent to me. I was going through the motions. I was doing what I was supposed to do. Um, and then I was challenged and I was hit by um, a wall. Uh, Pastor Bill asked me to become a youth leader here um, for AMPT for the, the kids that we have. I had just gotten out of college. I was trying to figure out my life. Um, and I was like, no, I don't want to do that. It's too hard. That sounds uncomfortable. Um, and I pushed and I like ran as far as I could. Um, and he kept asking, and I was like, man, you're really persistent. Um, <laughs> if 
any of you know him, he's pretty persistent. Um, and I'm so thankful that he was, because after I ran a lot, um, I finally said yes. And um, so I've been a youth leader for, for several years now. And um, that, really, that really began the climb for me to realize that I was not really living the life that I was supposed to be living, or the life that I wanted to live, or the life um, that God had called out for me. Um, so I became a little uncomfortable, which is good, actually, really, really good. Um, I realized that I had been running from Pastor Bill for so many times because I lacked confidence. Um, and what was I going to say to these kids? You know, I have nothing to say to you. Um, and I realized it was because of the comfort that had snuck into my life that I lacked this confidence. Um, so I started to dive further into my scripture and have more conversations and then the confidence build. And the kids were just phenomenal. If you ever get to meet with our kids, they're wonderful. Um, and they're, <laughs> except Isaac. Um, <laughs> just kidding, I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Their, uh, their accountability of me and their questions were just phenomenal. Questions that I had never even thought of that just sent me further up that peak to like dive into the scripture and start asking questions myself to try and help them. Um, so they're, they're a huge part of my faith journey. Um, and I, I was starting to get used to this uncomfortability, which I know has such a negative connotation in our world that no one really wants to be uncomfortable. But I realized, that, again, it is like the best thing that could have happened to me. Because um, along with their amazing questions and becoming, uh, becoming a youth leader, um, I was also faced with becoming a confirmation mentor to three young ladies in our church um, over the years. So my youth leader and confirmation mentor, it was just a really steep climb. Um, and it was exhausting. But it was really good because they're, again, those three young ladies, um, Emily, Morgan, and Molly, um, were able to work with me um, and hold me accountable, whether they knew it or not, to make sure that I was not just living out the actions I was actually living it out in my words and my faith and my love um, for them. So it was really amazing, and it helped me to work faith muscles that I didn't know existed. Um, you know, when you like start running after a while and you're like, wow, I have muscles that hurt that didn't even know could hurt. Um, that's what it felt like. It felt like I had new muscles. Um, it felt like I, you know, was working out things and it was great. Um, but I don't want you to think that becoming a leader is the only way to do this um, or a leader by title. You know, you don't have to become a mentor. You don't have to become a youth leader to, to work those muscles, even though I do believe it is one of the best, best aspects of my faith journey. Um, there are other ways to, to work these faith muscles, and that's what, again, happened to me. Um, we're called to be witnesses and to make disciples, um, which I believe is what I was doing with AMPS and with the confirmation mentors. But there are also other ways to do it. For instance, many of you know my husband, Corey. He's in the back in green. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I know he's spoken on our story before. Um, we've had quite a climb together. It's been interesting. Um, but in the beginning of our relationship, Corey was beginning his own faith journey. Um, and so we had a lot of really hard conversations, you know, like first date conversations about God and salvation, and science, and loss, and humanity, and how God intertwines through all of that. So that, those conversations um, really made me stretch, because he was challenging me, and he was challenging what I believed, and he was challenging, you know, my thought process and my faith, which was great, because he was asking these amazing questions, um, and it just sent me further up the peak and closer to God, um, because I started to make sure that I knew what I believed. And if I was going to have these conversations with the kids or I was going to have these conversations with him, I needed to know um, where I stood and what I was looking at. So I started reading scriptures that were new, even though I'd been in the church for years. Um, I started having conversations with people, um, both in the, my, in the congregation and out of the congregation, to help me figure out what was going on. And they, again, were not easy conversations to have, um, but they, they're so beneficial, and they were so 
amazing because you listen to other people and you hear their side and then they help you to rework yours. Um, it, was, it was so great. Um, so between uh, the confirmation mentors and Amped and Corey and all of that amazing running, I don't run a lot, so <laughs> this is a great analogy. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was so close, I was so close to God. Um, I was reading my scripture, I wasn't just showing it in my actions, I was living it out daily. I was praying all the time to try and figure everything out. Um, and closer than I think I'd ever been, um, which I think to me hit me really hard because I'd been here since I was eight. And not until I was in my mid-twenties was I was like, oh, this is what you want from me, got it. Um, and I learned to be able to stand stronger on what I believed. I learned to be able to run faster after God and to jump higher to reach new understandings because I was learning, I think, more than the kids were learning. Um, as I watched God move people's lives, I realized that he was doing so much more in my own. Um, so that was, a, that was a peak in my life. It was great. Um, I was doing so much. I was so close to God. Um, but life hits, you know? Um, I am notorious for overbooking my schedule. Anybody else? <laughs> notorious for it. Um, and that, that was my downward spiral. I became really busy. Um, I started doing all these things. I went back to school and just like my schedule filled up quickly. And that's where the comfort kind of snuck back into my life because I was focused on the things I was doing rather than you know, my relationship with God. I believe that I had done my job as a Christian. Um, I had witnessed others, I was a youth leader, like I was doing what I was supposed to do. Um, but this life is not, it, you know, this Christianity is not a job that we do, it's, it's, um, it's life. So unfortunately I had lost my desire to search further or to push my understanding of God any further because I just, I had gotten comfortable. So um, of course, God intervenes, thankfully, um, and through the people of this church um, and through, through my friends, um, actually. And this is jumping years. This is like recently in the last couple months. So this is, um, this is still new and this is still fresh to be able to try to figure it out. Um, so bear with me. <laughs> um, God faced me with another, another challenge and another hill to climb. Um, I've recently learned that I thrive through challenges, so I'm really glad this happened and I learned to grow a few new muscles, like standing up here in front of all of you. This is terrifying. Um, but uh, it's a good muscle to grow. Um, it's training and discipline that brings us closer to God. Again, just as Paul describes in Hebrews 12, um, I've been going to this verse so often, that discipline isn't always fun, but it pays off. Those who are well-trained find themselves mature in their relationship with God. That's Hebrews 12, 11. Um, and that has really resonated with me because this is scary um, and this is hard. But, you know, I've always tried to roll or fall back on the fact that, you know, discipline isn't always fun. Like, you know, running. People run marathons all the time and they train um, for months and months and months and that does not look easy. I've never done it. I cannot imagine how hard that must be. But it pays off in the end and it, it, you get um, so much more out of it when you run that marathon, and this is the race that we're running. So the training that I recently found myself in is through these tough conversations. <laughs> I've been in a lot of faith conversations recently with two of my closest friends, um, one being Anna and the other one, um, a high school friend, Teresa. The three of us have been um, discussing our faith journeys together you know, girl talk. So we, <laughs> um, you know, Anna and I have spent our life together and um, Teresa has been a huge part of it. She's early in her faith journey, so we've been really having um, deep conversations. Um, and one night at dinner, we were having these conversations about salvation. You know, what does it mean to be saved? Um, what does it look like? Is there a time that's too late? You know. And I discovered that during one of these conversations, as we were trying to have it, Anna and I didn't interpret something the same way. 
Um, and we didn't, we didn't see something the same way, which was new. As I said earlier, um, Anna played a huge part in my faith journey. Um, she's been my faith partner and my accountability partner for years. Um, we've traveled this journey together most of our lives. Even though she's in Africa, she, um, her and I still hold each other accountable. So this was the first time I realized that we didn't see something the same way in our faith. And it scared me, clearly, a lot. Um, it, I started to worry. Um, I immediately started questioning things, looking back to scripture and worrying whether or not it was going to impact our friendship. Um, I realized we've disagreed, obviously, on things before. Um, this isn't like our first disagreement. Um, but this was our first faith disagreement and not interpreting something the same way. Um, and that, that's what I think scared me because I... We've been through this for years together. So my climb happened again because I was in a valley. I was comfortable in my faith. I was busy. Um, and I recently was pushed further up um, to this peak because not only was I searching for answers to the questions I now had after these conversations, but I was also trying to help Teresa understand and help her to kind of figure out her new understanding, um, the multitasking of life. And through the questions and hard conversations, I found such a deeper meaning than just the answer to the question that I originally had. Um, at first, I thought the differing in opinions between my friend and I would be negative, and I thought this would impact our friendship. I thought it would be really bad, but it was actually amazing, um, and it has been amazing, because again, this is still, still going on. This is still recent for us. Um, Proverbs 27, 17 talks about iron sharpening iron, through these hard conversations of faith that we have, um, we actually make each other stronger. We push each other um, further up and we help each other build in those faith, those faith muscles. Our love for one another will guide these conversations so that they benefit us and help us to open up our minds to these new understandings. Which brings me to the 1 Corinthians 13 verse that Toby read for us earlier. Um, this verse is so famous in weddings. Um, we hear the love passage all the time in these weddings, but I want you to listen to it again um, out of that context and into the context of the love that Jesus calls us all to. So 1 Corinthians, again, um, I may be able to speak the languages of human beings and even of angels, but if I have no love, my speech is, my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell. I may have the gift of inspired preaching, I may have all the knowledge and understanding, all secrets. I may have all the faith needed to move mountains, but if I have no love, I am nothing. I may give away everything I have and even give up my body to be burned, but if I have no love, this does me no good. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. It does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith and hope and patience will never fail. It's usually where it ends, but there's so much more to this passage. Love is eternal. There are inspired messages, but they are temporary. There are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. For our gifts of knowledge and inspired messages are only partial. But what is perfect comes then what is partial will disappear. When I was a child, my speech, feelings, and thinking were all those of a child. Now that I am an adult, I have no more use for childish ways. What I see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. And then it will be complete, as complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Again, many of us focus on that passage in a marital relationship, but this passage has been so much more to me recently. It talks about sharing the gospel with love, to witnessing with love, and describes what that love is. This is a definition of love for us um, and what is expected, but it doesn't stop there. The end of that passage is really what has stuck with me recently. The end of the passage, um, verse 12 it says, what we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. Then it will be complete, as complete as the knowledge, God, complete as the knowledge God is of me. Um, through these really hard conversations, 
that I've had with friends and youth um, and the pastors that have been so open um, to helping me figure all these things out. Uh, this passage has helped me to understand that I don't know all the answers. Um, only God does, and I don't, I don't see everything, because what we see is a dim image in a mirror, um, and that none of us will really understand them um, or know everything in full until we see God face to face. And because of that, there will always be a difference of opinions, and I had to learn to be okay with that. I had to learn to be okay with not knowing all the answers. I had to learn to be okay with not having the right answer, whatever that is, um, and being really to sit in that uncomfortable feeling and again, being okay with that. Um, and because of that, even the most <laughs> studied theologians and philosophers will disagree um, down to two best friends in Cockeysville um, can disagree and that's okay. Um, this has given me comfort the good kind of comfort, not the bad kind, um, through this journey, because <laughs> it is so uncomfortable sometimes. Um, but it's the kind of discomfort that can bring us closer to God and each other, the kind that when partnered with love can bring about a change that we never knew could happen. It's been quite a journey. Um, I really like this picture, the one that um, was from the sermon title, because it has so many peaks and valleys. Yeah, this is beautiful. Um, so I'm still climbing up, and it's been such a tough climb, but a good climb, the one that stretches your muscles and you feel good after a workout, I think. Um, <laughs> thank you, appreciate that. Um, <laughs> honestly, I hope that we continue, to, or I continue to climb, and that we continue to climb, um, and that I, I don't reach that peak, because then I fear coming back down. Um, so I want to keep climbing and I want to keep pushing through that discipline that Paul talks about, through that hard work, um, and through those conversations with those around me. Um, through the small groups that we've had at Epworth, I've been able to bring these hard topics to them, these topics of salvation, Christianity, homosexuality, dis discipleship, to a group that I trust. Um, and each time that I'm challenged, I find myself reaching out to fellow Christians, whether it be friends um, or the pastors here or my small group um, to help me build and grow in my understanding. And sharing in the small group, that in and of itself is a faith muscle for me that I am not very good at. Um, I'm really good at listening and hearing other people's perspectives, but for me to bring something to the table was hard. Um, and I'm hoping some of you can feel that as well, that I don't necessarily always bring a big conversation. Um, but being able to do that and having the space to do that has been so beneficial to me. Um, and I hope that they know that because I've been able to just ask questions. Um, I've been able to bring scripture and have those conversations. And Hebrews 10:24, 25 um, helps me to know that that's okay to do <laughs> and that I should be doing that. This scripture talks about um, encouraging the church. It says, let us be concerned for one another to help, us, to help one another to show love and to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. Paul is encouraging the church to meet together. Um, and I think that it is so important because that's, that's where we learn um, and that's where we're challenged. Whether you meet one-on-one -on -one with somebody or you meet with a group, um, ask questions, bring up conversation. Um, those, those have been so beneficial. And we need to remember to hear from one another because those that agree with us and those that challenge us help us to grow in our faith. It's important to be open to new understandings and the various truths. A friend and I may interpret something different, but that doesn't mean that we can't find common ground in love and we can't find common ground through Jesus. It helps us to build new muscles and strengthen existing ones when we're open to these tough conversations. Whether it be about salvation, society, politics, scripture, there's so many things we can talk about. Um, it can all result in a stronger faith when partnered with love, which again is why I like that first Corinthians passage so much. I encourage you to be open to questions and challenges to dig deeper and to work those faith muscles that have become weak because I can guarantee you that in doing so, we will all grow in our understanding and closeness with God and therefore in our love for one another. 
transversing these peaks and valleys together as the body of Christ. Thank you. <laughs>